here now. And uh, so we will have the uh, initial introduction of the participant which has just happened and we will have the overview of the course, we will break for tea and then we will have one uh, uh, very important session on what is the importance of post production in e-learning. So why do we do all these things? What is the main reason behind doing this? Is the basic point what I am going to talk about. Uh, long time back when I started learning, uh, one of the teachers uh, had told me a very beautiful uh, way of understanding things. Uh, what do I mean by that? Is a famous theory called 5 W and 1 H. What is interesting about this theory is that if you apply this to any issue, you will get complete answer to the problem. Why I am saying that uh, is because of the, the way it is woven around. So what are those 5 Ws? So let us go by the presentation now. Okay, so the first W is why. So uh, why do we do post production in e-learning? Is there a requirement of post production to be done? Why do we do a post production? So any, any uh, vague ideas about why do we do post production? If there was no post production for example, then what, what could have been gone wrong? Is there any idea? people can come out with. You all agree that we, we, we do post production, right? We, we used to at one time we used to only do production, right? And we used to just beam whatever was coming out. So I remember the days of Doordarshan where the titles were written by hand by some painter Babu and then they used to just uh, put it in front of the camera and uh, even the from one title to another title they will drop one paper and then they will lift another paper and you can see all that can see even hands coming in between. So these kind of things used to happen. So then uh, from that point onwards till today where we have heavily dependent on post production, why do we require post production? So that is one of the one of the points. So see we are going in a way that we will approach the problem slowly. Second is what is post production? Uh, so what what is the definition of post production? What is exactly what we call as post production? Is it editing, is it special effects, is it uh, authoring, is it rendering, what is post production? Then when do you do post production? Of course it has to be done after you do the production, but uh, can we plan it earlier also? That is the question remains. Where do you do post production? Because post production cannot be done in the recording studio, so it has to be done somewhere else. So it also requires some hardware software support. Okay, the questions are big, getting bigger and bigger as you can see. So who does the post production? So there are different set of people who will do that. And finally, see these are the five Ws. So if you apply these five Ws to any question or any any problem, you will come to know the entire uh, theory behind the existence of that. And the final question is, how do you do the post production? That is where our course is. So that is the reason why we are here. So we'll just analyze these questions one by one. Why do we need post-production in e-learning? Basically, if it is e-learning, when there is a lecture being given, right now I'm talking here, it is being beamed to you, and uh, it is being going across also. So now, why do we require post-production? Why do we take it on to the capture, edit it, and then polish it, and send it out? So one of the reasons why we do it is to reuse. Because if we have not recorded it, then how can we listen to this lecture again? So we need to reuse it. To reach out so that it can go to some more places. To archive so that uh, we will have a uh, backlog of all these uh, recorded things. So finally the end line is to make it better. Uh, I have a small video here by uh, Professor Walter Levin. He is an eminent personality in physics. And uh, he teaches at uh, MIT, which is uh, one of the best engineering institutions. Uh, as I told you, he is a professor of physics and uh, we have his courses on YouTube right now. So we can go and see that. Uh, this is a particular example of one particular lecture he was giving out, uh, in which he was explaining some uh, theorem and in which there was an equation to be written on the board. And he started off writing the equation and uh, as you can see it was recorded live 
and before it was put up onto the YouTube, post production was done, right. So, the live recording was taken to the post production unit, they did some editing and then it was given to YouTube people. So, what has happened in between is a very interesting thing to see. So, let us just see that. And I am asking you, what is the current that is flowing around? And you will laugh at me, you will say that is almost an insult. I wish you had given that problem at the first exam. Because E equals the current that is going to run divided by. See, you can mark a few things here. Uh, first thing, uh, they are using a very bold chalk right now. And you, if you can see, he is not holding the chalk like this, he is holding the chalk like this. So, he is writing it like, like this. You can see that. So, he is not able to hold it like because it is a very big chalk. So, he is not holding it uh, like this, right. Secondly, because the chalk is big, the size of the writing is also quite bold. Third thing is that if you notice in uh, most of the foreign universities, they have multiple boards there. They do not have a single blackboard, so that you do not have to erase it every time. So, they have multiple boards there. Here you can see there is a there is a board behind the board and on the left side also you can see multiple boards hanging. So, this is a standard process there and what they have is additionally they can just roll that board up and it stays there. So, you can have multiple writings also on the wall kind of. So, that is a very popular thing. This is an interesting thing to see because in India when we have recordings and I have seen most of the people here are going through that problem. The faculty Ekbar Likra and we have two cameras. So, we have put one camera on the white board or the black board and uh, he is writing very small. So, we are not able to zoom in and if we zoom in uh, then he erases that sometimes he is covering that area. So, these kind of problems occur. So, this was one of the things, but apart from that what I wanted to show you was now we will come to that. Because so, e here is writing an equation. that is going to run divided by R1 was R2. Oh my goodness, what did I do? <laughs> I forgot Ohm's law. E equals IR, I remember, not I over R. So, R1 plus R2 should go upstairs. And everything that follows is correct, so you don't have to worry about that. This was just a big slip of the pen. And so the current I is 10 to the minus 3 amperes. So, here the video is paused now, right. What had happened was the story is like this that he gave a lecture in which the video was recorded. At this particular point, he wrote some equation where it is written that I is on top of R1 plus R2, and after he was watching that lecture in editing, he realized that he has done a mistake there. So, that R1 plus R2 should be on top and the I should be below that. And he realized that that was a mistake, but the rest of the equation after this was correctly done. So, what he did was they shot another video of him which was put up here as a picture in picture and here he says, oh my god, what a mistake I have done. I have forgotten Ohm's law. Ohm's law was supposed to be taught in 7th standard. So, he said I have uh, forgotten Ohm's law now and then I have made this mistake, but do not worry the rest of the equation is fine and uh, this is only slip of my pen. So, that, that is kind of he has added that uh, particular thing at the post production level. Now, that is where I, I wanted to emphasize that this is the power of post production that is where it is required to have post production. In ideal course, people could have followed this wrong equation and have done a complete mistake of that equation. So, mathematical calculations could have completely gone and the editors were completely clueless because faculty has made the mistake and we have captured it. We can't erase it there, or uh, how to do that because he's also talking along with it. So we can't change the audio now. So this was a problem. So this is the solution. What we, uh, what he has found out. So I come to the next question of uh, what is the production process in e-learning. So the production process is quite similar to the movie making process. So most of you have done uh, some filmmaking prior to doing the e-learning filmmaking. So, it is typically comprising of pre-production, production and post-production which is a standard process. The problem here is that the pre-production and production are not in the hands of the filmmaker. So, pre-production is the course preparation which is done by the faculty. 
production which is actual delivery of the course is also done by the faculty which is not in my hands or your hands and what is in our hand is only the post production. So that is where we have to fine tune it and make it better and look and so we do it by doing uh, all this process like capturing, editing, titling and other things. But there are inputs which are required from the faculty side because we have to constantly remember that we cannot mindle around with the content itself. So somewhere we like we saw the example, if the equation was wrong, then we, we cannot pass it like that because if the faculty can find out that is a mistake what he himself has done, we have to rectify it in some different way. That is the requirement. When to do that? Definitely after the production, before the final authoring is done, that is when we make it public, when we release it. So before that we can do anything what we want to do with that. But once we release it, then it is already available for public and then we cannot hide our mistakes. So where do we do it? So we do it in studios, labs and we require higher end workstations in hardware, software, we require special, special things. Every time we go with a proposal, uh, people will say that okay, tum logo ko hamesha kuch specially chahiye hota hai. Normal PC se kaam nahi chalta hai. You need graphic cards. Tum logo ko monitor ek nahi do chahiye. Ye tum logo ko zyada graphics dekhna hai. So you need better RAM. So pure lab mein jitna RAM hoga, utna ek hi machine mein lagta hai. So these kind of things will be specially required for you guys. So these are this, this is what we will discuss. Then who does it? We all do it. We all meaning. We are editors, compositors, effects specialists if required, authoring experts, technical experts. So uh, how do we do it? So finally, we will come to the course schedule which will explain you that how we are going to do all these things. So the, that will be our actually master plan to go ahead in terms of uh, the delivery mechanism. How are we going to do it? So, so far whatever we have seen. So does anybody has any questions or suggestions to add up to? Uh, why he did not correct it there? I mean he, he came on, on the camera in the post production. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. like 7 days after the lecture was given. Yeah, but that can be edited out. No? I mean that, that portion uh, he did not edit it and I mean why it was not edited out along with the audio? Along, he could have just cut it out yeah, just, I mean, and then again record it. Yeah, because I mean in any way he has uh, done all the post production, uh, PIP yes. and all that. It's so like that, thing, that, right? that, is, that is where I what I call is uh, different editing techniques. So he has made it in a very, very funny way because his nature is like that. Okay. Professor Levin is known to be a very, very lively professor. He is not one kind of professor who will be like always iron face and he will not even smile. So he is a very, very lively, if you look at his other lectures, you will realize that he will typically make people laugh in the class much more. So similar way, he yeah. thought that instead of doing it again as a retake, so he just uh, took a PIP. So uh, it's a very funny situation where you see himself showing the back uh, to the board. He is paused at that frame, and suddenly you see him facing you and saying, "Oh my God, what have I done?" and things like. So his script also is very funny. If you listen to it carefully, he has also spoken in a very funny way. Uh, the, the clothes are different, so it is shot on a different day, different location, different time. So he deliberately did that. Yeah, okay. He could have done it separate. That's that's precisely the point what I'm making. So one particular problem can have multiple solutions. Now it depends on the post-production unit uh, how to deal with it. So uh, ideal solution could have been that okay, come with the same uniform, come with the same sweater and the same shirt. In the same classroom, we'll put the camera in the same angle and you write it again. But till what point will he go on writing? Because you have to match it somewhere. So that may be different and his accent may be different and it will not be looking very smooth at that time. People will make out that this was done later on. Instead of all this jamela, he just decided that I will skip all that and make it into a funny way and just introduce as a PIP and uh, admit that okay, I made a mistake, so that is okay. So this is the way uh, people have done it. So there will be multiple ways of doing it and we will look at all the multiple ways actually speaking yes. So uh, there could have been a compositing uh, option also. It, they could have just shown the audience for some time and just shown a, a different uh, re text written there. That was possible, right? They could have, in Photoshop, they could have reversed the thing, right? It's possible, right? So they could have done that. But uh, they deliberately took another route. We will look at all these options also, actually. In one of the labs, we will we'll look at this. So how to hide this? So this is specially because, uh, so what he is saying is relevant here because um, right now what we are recording is also uh, getting onto the cassette. 
we will be capturing this, we will be capturing this and we will be giving you a chunk of 10 minutes each for a team of 2 or 3, we will decide about that. So, uh, the idea would be to create a, a logical video out of it. Now, the problem is that there will be a video where I am maybe congratulating somebody for getting an award, I will be waving some rules of the game which are not relevant. Because if I see this lecture again 5 years back, uh, afterwards uh, to a different audience, with it will not make any sense. Uh, all these references of YCMOU or things like that will not make sense. So, how to edit these portions and still keep the uh, theme going on is a challenge for the editor. So, most of the time our editors find this problem that suddenly the faculty is announcing uh, on Thursday there will be a quiz. Now, that Thursday will not mean anything if I watch it on a Thursday itself. So, uh, how to edit those portions and keep the, the link intact is sometimes a problem. So, we will try to do this as a lab experiment also here in our course that we will take this video and try to eliminate the unnecessary portions and keep the necessary things. So, that is one, one more option. So, today we will have this uh, overview of the course and the importance of the post production in editing and in e-learning. We will look at some tools and some processes used by people. Like I said, uh, after tea we will have presentations by people uh, where they will come back and tell us that what is the kind of uh, system they use. We will have those small presentations for maybe half an hour or something. Then we will split actually for the labs. We will go down and we will try and capture some of this what we have done today. Sajjan who is my colleague and he would be uh, giving that talk tomorrow about encoding techniques. We will have a tea break and immediately after that we will have lab session based on the same theme. Next Saturday when we come here, we will have uh, the other side of the story like what Professor Patek was saying and apart from the technology side, so we will look at the creative side also. So, we will go into some details about the color and graphics uh, which are present in video, what is the role of colors and what is the role of the graphics in a video. Uh, we will touch base upon some titling and animation techniques, what are, how they are required, how can they be better than what we do and we will have a again a lab session about color graphics and uh, titling. On the Sunday we will have uh, the first session on editing techniques, so that that is where I actually we will get into the exact mode of this particular course where we will actually start being looking at some editing options and how do we do it and things like that. Let me tell you frankly, we are not here to teach you uh, some softwares. So, this this course is not about teaching Premiere or, or uh, uh, Avid or anything else. This is about editing. So, it can be even a film editing where you cut the film by hand and sellotape it and things like that. So, that is ok. But editing as a principle is what we will be looking at. We will have a session, small session on compositing and special effects because sab log bahut interested hai ye session mein lekin e learning mein iska kitna utilization ho sakta hai iske upar bahut bahas ho rahi hai so we we don't know how much importance can we give to this area but depending on your feedback we will decide how much should we give importance to this area so that is one uh, blank area right now then we'll have again lab sessions on editing and compositing as such on the last saturday we'll have uh, we'll start with rendering which is again a very boring area for people because uh, editing tak to maza aata hai lekin jab wo rendering ke liye udhar uh, ghanto wait karna padta hai aur fir baad mein ek aadhi mistake dikhai deti hai so that is very frustrating so to avoid all these frustrations what are the shortcuts what are the some principles which you have to remember so that uh, your rendering life becomes smooth is one uh, topic we will also discuss about authoring so when you do something uh, when, when a video is done, uh, what kind of uh, media is to be used for that? So, whether you are going to give it on a DVD which is being played on a computer, whether it will play on a DVD player or whether it will have a menu or it will not have a menu and all these things will be basically uh, discussed in this area and also publishing. So, because we have couple of people who are doing web based transmissions, we have satellite based transmissions. And we also have things like YouTube nowadays. So, 
So, publishing of the content on a particular medium is also becoming an important aspect. So, let us at least go through that. I thought of uh, adding one more session on graphic design for publishing because what I have seen is uh, uh, when I talk this, uh, do not take it personally. What I mean to say is we all are into that category. Most of you will agree ki bahut acha editing hua hai, acha course hua hai, uh, possibly best of the person has given a very good course. Humne record kiya hai, edit acha se hua hai, titling bhi humne bahut acha kiya hai usme, color scheme bahut acha se use ki hai. Finally, jab hum usko kisi ko dena hai hume, to finally hum uski ek CD cut kar lete hai, jo ki koi brand ki hoti hai. Aur uske upar hum humare marker pen se humari uh, calligraphy dikha dete hai ki kis tarah se humne uska naam likha hai. Finally, वो बहुत बार ऐसे हो जाता है कि वो सिर्फ हमें ही पढ़ने आता है जैसे वो डॉक्टर का प्रिस्क्रिप्शन सिर्फ डॉक्टर या वो मेडिकल वाला ही पढ़ सकता है उसमें दो ही लोग पढ़ सकते हैं तो उस तरह से फिर फाइनली ऑल दैट एफर्ट जो आपका फ्रंट एंड है जो आपकी सीडी और सीडी कवर है उसके उसको देख के वो एफर्ट बिल्कुल दिखाई नहीं देता है मतलब यू कांट इवन जज कि कितने हाई क्वालिटी का ग्राफिक्स अंदर यूज किया आपने क्या किया बिकॉज ऑफ दैट पुअर पैकेजिंग ऑब्वियसली सो आई थॉट आई एड अप टू दिस बिकॉज आई आई I am pretty convinced of the fact that whatever graphic style you use for the film as such has to be consistent with the publishing and the packaging part also. So, if you see a film, uh, pub, uh, film CDs or film DVDs, you see the jo poster ya jo color scheme jis tarah se gajni likha hota hai CD ke cover pe, usi tarah se film mein bhi aata hai. So, it is not that uh, gajni yahan poster mein aise likha hai aur film ke andar se type karke aa gaya gajni ka. So, it is not never like that because they follow a certain style of designing for that and that is very essential because that adds to the branding. So, I, I wanted to add this, this also as a small lecture here so that we all will go through one at least assignment It is a very common thing, it is like uh, shirt ke sare button laga hai to ye button bhi laga nahi chahiye. So, it is like a very common thing if you, if you just uh, tick mark it. But jab hum nahi lagate hai tab ki problem jo dikhai dete hai. So, to fix that, I thought we will have that also as a one bullet and we will have a lab session uh, based on all these things. We will have the final day where we will uh, announce specific projects for the groups. So, by the time uh, 21 days uh, would be passed and we would be identifying certain groups to create certain assignments. So, that group will consist of maybe possibly like two editors and two designers and uh, two cameramen or something like that and they will be creating some projects. And at the end of the day, we will have the presentation of those projects by different groups. So, let us see how many of them can be formed because we are just uh, going by the list right now and trying to mix and match people so that we give justice to everybody and everybody can participate in that. So, that is the idea. And this would be kind of a experience to share with each other. So, okay, I can, mujhe uh, editing me confidence so give me that or my editing ke jaga mujhe titling de do, mein titling me kuch achha karke dikhaunga. So, these kind of things are there and that is also on rotational basis where it is not compulsory that you will be uh, doing only that. If time permits, we will also swap things. So, ek group mein agar mein editing karo, to dusre group mein mein titling karo, to tisre group mein mein camera karo. So, these kind of things will also expose everybody to everything. But it is very important that suppose there is an editing team and they have never handled a camera themselves. So, they just cannot point out fingers to cameramen ki aapne itna kharaab camera work diya, isse hamara editing pura band baji hai. So, that is not possible. Similarly, for the designers, if they, they are not sure about what they have to shoot. So, uh, uh, shoot kaise milta hai, iske upar unka agar koi control nahi hai. So, then uh, they should go and see themselves ki what are the problems there. So, for example, right now this video is being shot of mine with a background of a, a, a world behind and a, a dark blue color on the other side. Uh, so, I uh, practically the designer has no control now when he's, he has to put titling, he has to, uska favorite color bhale hi brown hoga, lekin yaan agar brown suit nahi ho raha hai, ya black suit nahi ho raha hai. So, he has to go with the frame what is available and that is where the challenge starts. So, in that sense also we will try and mix match the teams so that we everybody gets gets a chance to interact with each other. And uh, towards the end of the day we will have presentations by these groups and uh, after that we will have a uh, valedictory function where you all will be receiving your certificates. Now um, important part is that 
uh, everybody has to participate uh, to claim for the certificate there and uh, everybody has to contribute and uh, take away something apart from the certificate back home. So, uh, certificate is incidental because you are physically here, you are entitled for a certificate, but I would urge that uh, let us uh, claim that certificate by putting in some uh, effort from our own side, so that it becomes an enjoyable uh, course for us. So, let us begin the journey and uh, I now uh, formally welcome you all with uh, these words that whatever I wanted to say about uh, this particular course. Uh, I am sure you will have lots of suggestions about this course and uh, we will try to accommodate more and more of that. We are very, very flexible in, in arranging the course. It is not hard and fast. Let me tell you again that whatever schedule and things I have told you is is not like cast in stone now. So, it is not like that you have written here and now you have to do something else. It is very, very flexible because it is finally that you all and we all have to learn from each other. So, finally, if it is that is the goal, then we can work towards it. So, uh, we are okay with any suggestion and any kind of participation from you all and we will do that. By the end of the course, at least if we know everybody by names, I will be happier. If everybody knows each other by their work, I will be even more happier. And if everybody can recognize each other's work, then I will be the most happy person. Because that is the point which I wanted to do from this thing. So, if you can know this person, okay, this guy is the designer and he has designed for this particular film and I know that, is I think the best compliment you can get. Because for a creative person, if the creative person is known by his work, that is the best compliment a creative person can get. So, I think with these words, I will leave you for now and we will assemble back within half an hour after the key. Thank you.